Hey everybody, this is Eric with For Your Info Podcast, a production of Solutions by Cat. As many of you know, I am owner of ERX Contracting, and when I can, I like to volunteer my time in the community to contribute and try to make people's lives better. Um, a few weeks ago, I met Johnny Vega, Correct. who is the CEO of an amazing organization, and uh, so we asked him to come out and just tell us this story. Okay. Great to have you, Johnny. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm CEO of J Arts uh, Second Chance Foundation. Uh, J Arts stands for Juvenile Adult Rehabilitation and Transitional Services. Um, it was uh, a vision of mine that came to fruition when uh, a lot of the violence started in Lancaster last year. Um, so uh, my president and I, Rebecca Rosado, decided to put together a Stop the Violence March, um, which I was upset one day and my daughter came up to me, her name's Sophia, and she said, uh, Daddy, why are you so mad? And I said, well, two of my friends just got killed. And she said, well, I wish the violence would end. So hence the name Sophia's Wish, uh, Stop the Violence March. Uh, we started that up, we put it together, and it came out beautiful. We got the community together. We marched from uh, 426 South Queen Street to Benz Park. And when we got to Benz Park, we actually had a uh, an event where we had singers, mimes, comedians, um, speakers, spoken word. Uh, it was a phenomenal event. A lot of people showed up, supported, and that's how J Arts was born. That's amazing. The, um, the J Arts program, mm -hmm. can you tell everyone what that's about? J Arts is a mentoring and transitional program. Uh, the mentoring part of J Arts, uh, we actually just um, met up with the school district and a new superintendent, and we got confirmation that we will start working hand in hand with the school district of Lancaster, helping with their, uh, their kids that are having problems. So um, we're going to start a mentoring program through that. And then the transitional program, we're actually helping people that are coming out of incarceration and also just in a bad spot in their life, maybe homeless or um, just uh, in a bad place. And we're just there for them to help them. Mm -hmm. And you ended up calling this the Second Chance Foundation. Correct. Um, can you give us a little bit more about the second chance? What's the second chance about? Well, everyone, I feel, in my opinion, everyone deserves a second chance. Um, we come at some points in our lives where we don't know where we're going or just made some bad choices and um, there's just not a lot of help out there. So um, we're here to give them a second chance. And what inspired me to, to do that was I got a second chance. So um, I made some bad choices when I was younger. Uh, Ended up getting uh, incarcerated. Uh, first time ever got in, getting in trouble. Um, uh, at the time, I, was, I owned an after hours club called the Oz. And um, through this after hours spot, uh, I was selling ecstasy. So uh, after a year owning and running this after hours uh, establishment, uh, uh, the federal government actually raided the, the club. Um, I got away that day. Um, I actually went through the back door and got away. So uh, I went on the run for six months. Sure. And uh, one day, uh, two two stories. One story: I was sitting in the house waiting. I was I was dealing drugs heavy on the run from from the feds, and uh, I was sitting at a friend of mine's house and waiting on some drugs, <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, uh, there's police parked out front. And I looked out the window and I saw a car with a bunch of cops in it. And I was like, wow. So another car pulled up, another car pulled up. And uh, so I called the guy I was waiting on, told him to forget it. I said, I'll meet up with him later. you know. So I went out the back door and it was at the end of Prince Street, the very end of Prince Street. And I went through the back door, went through the backyard. As I'm going through the backyard... I see a little head pop up behind the wall, and then it goes back down. So I was like, man, who's that? So the way I went, I ended up on Beaver Street, if you go through the back 
I ended up on Beaver, which if you know, Lancaster is a very small street. So I'm walking up the street. I see someone come to the corner, start walking towards me. I cross the street. They cross the street. I cross the street. They cross the street. Finally, I, I knew it was a cop. He comes up to me, puts his hand on my chest, and he says, "What's your name?" And I just looked at him. I'm 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 at the I'm on the run at this point. So I'm like, "Oh, the gig's up. Basically, I'm done." So he asks me again. Asks me again. I say nothing. He sits me down on the curb. Another car pulls up. It's a guy in plain, almost dressed like I'm dressed, uh, Caucasian guy. And uh, in hindsight, it was, it was a federal agent. So he comes up and he says, uh, is this the guy we're looking for? And he, the cop says, uh, well, he didn't give me his name. So he said, and the, the, the Fed said, what's your name? I said, Marcus Torado. So he says, Marcus Torado. And like, yep, Marcus Torado, which was a friend of mine's. <laughs> so I gave him a fake name <laughs> and uh, gave him, I knew where my friend lived, gave him the address. Uh, they ran the name and everything came back okay. So I'm sitting there on the curb, just waiting. He said, well, we're going to run you in and run your fingerprints. So I'm thinking in my head, all right, it's over. I'm going to go to jail. Um, so the, the federal agent said, well, the guy we're looking for has tattoos. I can't show you now, but at the time I only had one tattoo right here. Had a long sleeve buttoned down just like this. And um, he said, roll up your sleeves. Let me see if you have tattoos. So I rolled up my sleeves up to my elbows. I said, look, I don't have any tattoos. Rolled them back down. <laughs> so uh, I'm sitting there waiting, waiting. They're like, well, we're going to take you in. I said, man, it's not me. I don't have any tattoos. You guys got the wrong guy. So I'm waiting there, waiting there. The plane, the, the regular cop. The first one that approached me says, beat it. I said, beat it. I said, all right. So I walk up the street. As soon as I get to the corner, I start hauling, you know what? <laughs> I just start running. I see a friend of mine. I tell him, can I come in your house? He lets me in his house. He comes back in. He says, what did you do? Did you shoot somebody? I said, why? He said, they have all of Prince Street closed down with your picture and they're looking for you. And I said, oh, my goodness, what the heck is going on? So went on the run again, make a long story short. I end up going to York and uh, end up getting caught in York. So I actually got away from the cops once before they actually caught me, which was when I went to court, they didn't like that at all. So kind of made an example out of me. Uh, they offered me uh, 10 years in federal prison. Uh, I took the plea because they have a 98.5 conviction rate. My lawyer advised me that if I would go to trial that I would lose. So, and if I would lose, I was facing 20 years in jail. So I was, I was 22 at the time. He said, you'll be home by the time you're 30. Um, it's the best deal I got for you. So that's when my incarceration began and ended up doing eight years in federal prison. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was charged with uh, conspiracy to distribute uh, 10,000 ecstasy pills. Holy cow. Yeah. So, and that's when I um, decided, one, uh, to give my life to God. Two, that if I made it through that, when I came home, I would make sure uh, uh, the younger generation or even anybody didn't make the same mistakes I made. Right. So that was my mission, to help people make the right choices and in any part of their lives. And how hard was it for you when you came out to find that second chance, to find it some was support and some help? extremely difficult. Um, my first job was KFC. I was making, I think, like $8, 9 an hour. Um, just the fact that I had a felony was... Uh, a lot of businesses won't hire you if they if you have a felony. felony. So um, it was difficult. Um, my second job was McDonald's. Uh, ended up being a manager at McDonald's and just um, a lot of hard work. Uh, fortunately, I had a great I have a great family, so I had a lot of support from from my family, friends, and um, eventually, you know, got married, bought a house, and it was all through hard work and and dedication. Um, but like I said, I had help. 
and a lot of people out there don't. So uh, if they don't have family, if they don't have friends, that's where we come into play and help right. them out. Right. So with the so with the mentoring program, you're trying to catch them in high school Correct. coming out, maybe trying to guide them before they might be making right. some stupid decisions right. and get some trouble. I don't mind helping a person that's made mistakes in the past, but my main objective is helping them before they make the mistake, right. before they have that felony on their record. Um, that way they can avoid what I went through, basically. Right. So I tell them my story, and um, hopefully it, it, it affects them and touches them and get them on the right path before you know they make a life-changing uh, choice. Right, right. And the, um, the transitional housing, mm -hmm. which is where, where I ended up getting involved, right. was uh, I ended up volunteering some time trying to do some rehabilitation to the building Correct. to move some people that were coming from the mission. Right. Um, can you tell us how that, that all works, your relationship with the mission and kind of how that slides um, into the transition home? Uh, after uh, working at McDonald's, I actually uh, got a job at Teen Haven, uh, which is a uh, Christian organization that's under the Water Street umbrella, and it's their youth program. They have a camp, they have uh, different locations, Philadelphia, York, Harrisburg, Lancaster, and um, basically it's a Christian uh, youth program, mm -hmm. and I was the boys program director there. So... Um, Build a relationship with uh, Jack uh, Frechter of uh, Water Street. Became really good friends with him. Um, met Anton, who later on you guys will meet. And uh, became his mentor. Um, he's a success story. Uh, great man. And um, ended up buying a property on Shipping Street, right next to my church, uh, 409 South Shipping Street. It was actually where I lived at. Uh, it's a multi-unit. I lived upstairs with my family, rented out the bottom. Uh, it was an investment property. And lived there for um, three years. Uh, unfortunately, went through a divorce. Uh, ended up leaving the house. Uh, renting out the entire house. Um, recently, about six months ago, things weren't working out with the tenants I had. Um, they basically messed up the house and got everybody out. I came to a crossroads where, what am I going to do with this property now? Had the nonprofit going and um, just had a vision. Uh, how can this house bless other people? Seems like a natural transition. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, Ended up uh, thinking about when I came home, how hard it was to find a place, um, you know, and talk to the people at the mission. And they had already had a few landlords doing that. And there was a waiting list. These guys were graduating from this two year program and waiting months before they could find a place to live. So they did all that hard work, all that dedication just to wait. So, so the people that are living at the mission, mm -hmm. or whatever their circumstances might be, right, um, are going through a two-year program. Two-year program. What's involved in that two-year program? Uh, it's a great program. Uh, of course, they 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 um, face any issues or problems they have as far as drugs, uh, alcoholism, violence. Um, they go through this program. They face those uh, problems, get through it. Uh, they, of course, they have to find employment. Um, before they leave the program, they have to have six months worth of rent saved. Um, so, so they teach them how to budget their money. So they're, so they're getting counseling and mentorship Correct. through this two years and having to get employment. Correct. And start budgeting their, budget, right. their money and get their life together. Right. So uh, they graduate from the program, but they can't leave until they have a place to stay. So and they're stuck in limbo. I, I can imagine... Um, the thought of employing someone who lives at the mission mm -hmm. could be pretty intimidating. Oh, definitely. There's probably a lot of stereotype, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that would be a difficult decision. Right, right. Um, they go through it all the time. I mean, um, of course, they have to be honest. You know how applications are. Have you had a felony in the past? So uh, they have to be honest about their past, and a lot of times doors are being closed on them because of it, and it, it could be very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, very heartbreaking or mm -hmm. you know and um a lot of times they go back to their former stuff you know <clears throat> using drugs again or just just being frustrated 
So to avoid all that, um, I decided to um, make my home a transitional home for the for these men. That's great. That's great. I can totally see that too. I know that there are services out there uh, when families have trouble. Mm -hmm. There are services out there to maybe help uh, a, a woman or help a mother and mm -hmm. children, right. that kind of thing. And, and oftentimes men are separated exactly. from their families. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to get their lives together mm -hmm. and they have nowhere to go. So right. they might be going through rehab. They might be trying to get a job and struggling to get hired. Right. And you can get somebody that's really just stuck in a corner and can't go anywhere. Right. And it's a really desperate place to be. Definitely. And it's such an easy place to just slide right back mm -hmm. into trouble because you're right. feeling desperate. And as a part of the transitional house, not only do we offer uh, housing for them, but through networking and uh, making connections in the city, I have people that can offer them jobs um, uh, through SACA, uh, making connections with uh, Carlos from SACA. He has a whole educational program uh, where they can go and further their education, uh, whether it's welding, construction. Um, uh, they also have culinary. So um, also I made a connection with CareerLink. Uh, they can go there and um, take up some stuff. So I'm not just ho helping them with a roof over their heads. I'm trying to give them the whole package as far as um, helping them out. Right, helping, giving some guidance to check this program exactly. out, that program out to right. help them grow. Right, right. I refer them to whoever I can refer them to. And um, it's also a structured environment. Like, even though they're leaving the mission where it's extremely structured, um, there's no drugs. If I think there's any uh, drug use going on or drug mm -hmm. abuse going on, there's a no tolerance uh no tolerance for that, so they're out. Um, they can't have women spend the night. Uh, um, they have to uh, keep keep the house clean at all times. I inspect once once a week, and maybe every other week I'll stop by. And I also uh, mentor them. Um, I take them under my wing. If they want to hang out, they just want to talk about something, uh, frustrated about anything, they, can, they have my number. They can call me, and I kind of counsel them. So... It's, it's been a great experience. That's amazing. And so the ultimate goal is they live at one of the transition houses. Right. And they, they get their life together. They get a job. Right. Get money saved up. Learn those, some of those critical pieces right. of, of living on their own that maybe they didn't learn. Right. Getting out of some of their own trouble. Mm -hmm. Learn to get out of their own way. Right. And we all get in our own way. Right. Um, and then they're going to try to just leave this home and get themselves get their own a new place. place to live right. and get their lives together. Right. right. They're established again. They have a strong foundation to stand on and they're ready to go on with their lives. That's amazing. It's a great, it's a great program. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. And if there are people in our community mm -hmm. who want to get involved right. with helping out the J Arts Second Chance Foundation, mm -hmm. What can they do? How do they get in touch? Uh, I'm very easy to find. I'm on all the social medias, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, my email, vegajohn779 at gmail.com. You can hit, hit me up on my email. Uh, if you want to help in any way, um, like Eric stepped up to the plate. We met at a function, and he came up to me, and it's like, how can I help? And it's as easy as that. Uh, it could be through monetary. It could be through your time. Uh, it could be as far as like a mentor for somebody. However you can help, I'm easy to find. Just get in contact. So it's not someone just maybe getting their hands dirty, helping rehab a home. Right. You're looking for people who could be a counselor, mm -hmm. give some guidance. Right. Any kind of assistance to really just help pull, right. the, pull the whole program together. Even if you've gone through something <clears throat> yourself in life and you're a success story now and you just want to share your story, which mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how much someone's story helps someone else especially if you can relate to what they're going through right now right. and you've, you've uh, conquered that. So that's, that's awesome too. Uh, one day when I was working on the house with Johnny, we ended up uh, taking a walk down the street and we ended up going to the back to school outreach program, met a lot of really cool people. Mm -hmm. And Johnny introduced me to Anton and we had a really great conversation and we'd love to play that audio for you now. Anything that I have, I can't keep what God gave me. I have to give it away. Go. <laughs> it's on. It's on? Yep. It's oh. on. Thank you. <laughs> Eric's helping me with the house. We're going to turn the house into a, a transitional home. Oh! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and if you need help in any way, I know. 
even if it's talking to the guys. Right. I got you. You're first, I, you're first on the list. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that is awesome. You know why that is awesome? They're not, first of all, they're not too far from the word. Right. Okay. And um, how I got here today is because of one of those houses. I know. Because when I left Water Street, I had to move into a house like that. I know. And from there, God did the words. And when, when I tell people where I live today, they say, hi, hi, how are you living there? I said, that's where God put me. I live out in Willow Valley. I said, what? I said, yeah. Yeah, beautiful you know? wife, oh. beautiful life. But my friend, it all started in this building here. 2006, that's when I turned my life over to God. Okay, after that, it's been a smooth run. Because I have, that the people that I surrounded myself with was like mentors, <laughs> sponsors, you know, people that was directing me to the Lord, not right. trying to take me away from the Lord, you know, but first I had to make that decision. I want to change, you know, and um, me, I no longer live for me. I live for others. It's no longer about me. I found that after I got married, too. <laughs> it's no longer about me. Yeah. You know? Whatever, yeah. whatever I do is to give God the glory and the person that I survived myself with. I got to walk my talk. Okay? And um, I've been here eight years now. It hasn't been a straight like I wanted it to be because I have an enemy which called the flesh because sometimes the flesh wants to do what it wants to do but once the Holy Spirit is with me see them two they don't like each other but I've been with the Holy the Holy Spirit has been guiding me through this you know and um to have a house right there I want to be part of that 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 is that is awesome I've, I got most of my treatment from Water Street Mission. I was a client there. Now I'm a full-time paid staff there. But this was the place that I, I was here every day doing the little things. I always see myself as a worker for the Lord. I'm always teachable. I'm no better than no one, because that's not how G Jesus, that's not how he portrayed himself. He humbled himself. That's what I do today. So when the church comes calling, when it's something like that, I want to be there for others, you know? You just made my day when you said that, man. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, because I know, I know a couple of guys that I talk to that are looking for places like that. But then at the same time, they cannot be babysitting either. Right. Because, because once you start coming out of a rehab, I said within a year or two years, you still have to be, uh, what you call, um, yeah, th th there has to be a structure. You know who wants it. Those who follow structure wants it. You know, but um, that is an awesome idea, man. That is a, and let me tell you about this brother here. I am so happy that the transformation God did with this man here, you know, I am so happy for Johnny. But, and he doesn't know it. God has more for him, you know? But to do that, to go and open a hospital for others? See, right now, he's no longer thinking about himself. He's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about other people, you know? So that, that's what it's all about. It's about the relationship, the fellowship, loving others. It's loving others, man. I mean, that's, that's what it's about. And every year, I'm here for this event because I remember one of my first, my first one of these first events, you know. They say, <laughs> they say that, they say that um, men don't cry. That's a lie. Because <laughs> the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Mm. Now Jesus was God. God wept. If God, if God could cry, who, who am I not to cry? <laughs> I'm allowed to cry. How about that? Uh, <laughs> right. But, but that made, that made my day. Even even if it's to do a, a a group, even if it's to uh I did this book called The Book of Romans, that changed my life. 
You know, that changed my life. There's other things like false belief, people telling you, oh, you're never going to do this, you never turn out to do this. But that's not what God said. When you read the scripture, God said, oh, I made you unique. I have a purpose for you. You know, some people put their own self down because of the stuff that they used to hear. Mm -hmm. But we have to change that. That has to change. The mind thinking has to change. You know, so, um, I, oh, man, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so glad that I got a chance to meet Anton. That was a really meaningful and powerful conversation I had. Um, so as we're looking at the J Arts program, right. what kind of support do you have so far? And where are you headed with support? You have some, um, I, some things happening. We're in a very fortunate place right now. Um, we're only a year, almost a year into um, having J Arts. And um, the support we're getting from the community is phenomenal. Uh, we actually last week met with the superintendent of the school district, and uh, we're going to start partnering up with them um, and uh, start our mentoring program and also uh, just going in there and giving uh, classes to the kids. Uh, I didn't mention this before, but we actually uh, partnered up with Members First Bank and Prime America, and they're coming in and they're actually going to talk to the kids about credit and budgeting nice. their money and stuff that you don't really learn in high school and um, I just met with uh, a lady from Prime America and she can show these kids how to retire at 40 <laughs> if they start at 18 so uh, that's huge that's I mean great. if these kids take in this information and use it um, they'll really put their put themselves in a place to succeed in life and they just got to listen and implement what we say and they'll, they'll be good um, also um, I was very fortunate uh, through Dr. Cross, who uh, is my grant writer. Uh, she used to run Upper Bound and uh, the Upper Bound program in Millersville. A uh, good friend of mine for over almost 20 years uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Wilson Good. Uh, if you don't know who Dr. Wilson Good is, uh, he's the first African American mayor of uh, Philadelphia, uh, two term mayor, um, phenomenal man. His legacy is just unbelievable and He's actually mentoring me, so uh, <laughs> that's amazing. It is, it is, and um, what we're doing uh, is actually taking his blueprint and uh, implementing it with J Arts. Uh, what I'm trying to do with the transitional program and mentoring program, uh, this gentleman has been doing probably for uh, 50 years. So yeah, he has I think 450 men uh, living in transitional homes just in Philly. Um, just in Philadelphia. Just in Philadelphia. Oh, and uh, his mentoring program, uh, Amachi, is uh, nationwide. So um, that's where I see J Arts uh, in the future, uh, being nationwide, uh, transitional homes all over the country, um, wherever else we can help. Um, but that's the foundation, the transitional and mentoring right now. But I can definitely see J Arts uh, venturing out in other ways to help people once we get that established it's it's really it's really amazing i'm going to get all emotional here mm -hmm. it's um as human beings um we we all need second chances Definitely. and it's really cool that these kind of programs are out there right and it's really cool if you can get involved right. in whatever way you can to uh, help people get a second chance right so a lot of us are sitting in a place where we're very blessed very fortunate um even though everyone has hard times um you really got to reflect on your own life and say, wow, I, I don't have it that bad. And there's people out there that do have it that bad. And um, because I'm a spiritual man, because God has blessed you and you should be able to have the heart to bless somebody else. And uh, and that's where I stand. I'm just trying to give back. And uh, I have a daughter. And hopefully one day when I'm gone, somebody will come up to my daughter and say, Hey, your dad was a a good cool. yeah a good a good guy, <laughs> and uh, hopefully she'll follow in my steps and and take over the legacy. Um, we're also uh, I'm all with I'm all with networking and meeting people, but I'm also a hands on guy. So uh, once a week on Mondays, along with my church in the Light Ministries, we actually pick a block every week and we go to that block. Uh, last week it was Strawberry and Locust. And we go to that block and we pray for the people on that block. We talk to them. We find out, ask them questions about 
Why do they think the community is where it's at now? Why do you think all this violence is going on in the community? And we actually, um, I don't want to say get our hands dirty, but we actually we're we're in the in the mix as far as um, just trying to find solutions to the problems. Mm. So, and rather than being in an office somewhere in another part of town trying to figure out the problem, right, you're right there with the people right that are living there. in it, right amongst the drug dealers and the drug users, and you know whatever else is going on in the neighborhood, we're we're right there. And uh, last week was just phenomenal. Uh, just a quick testimony. Uh, we're sitting there on the corner praying and talking, and three drug dealers come out of their house and they say something made us come out of the house we felt something was going on outside and we came out of the house to see what was going on so they come out the house they look down the street and here we are praying on the corner so they come down you know and we talk to them i tell them my story my testimony and they're like can you pray for us and like well what it well of course but what do you want us to pray for well pray that uh I stopped selling drugs. Pray that, you know, um, the one guy said, I got all these guns, but I I, I have to have them because I need protection. But at the same time, I don't want to have them because I don't want to hurt anybody. So it's like, pray that I have the courage to get rid of my weapons. So we're like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, so um, we prayed for him. And one guy started crying, and another guy from across the street runs across the street and he's like, I need you guys to pray for me too. And a lady comes out of her house, come in my house and pray for my house. So we went from, cause a couple of us were nervous. I mean, literally there, we, that, I don't know if you're familiar with that block, but there was people everywhere. I mean, you see guys rolling up blunts, you see, you know, guys drinking forties, like everyone was out. And, um, through prayer and through us being obedient, we shifted the whole atmosphere of that neighborhood. And it was just one of the most amazing feelings that I've ever had in my life to feel God's power go through you into someone else. It was just, it was just unbelievable. And it's almost like, I can't wait to do it again. I can't, it's almost, I want to say addicting, but it's like, I have to do that now. It's like, I can't wait for next Monday. Uh, what block are we going to be on next Monday? And who's going to come to church because we decided to pray for him that day? A lady with a tumor in her head came up to us. I just found out I got a tumor in my head. Can you pray for me? It was just awesome. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I do this for. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Getting a little emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid to let it go, man. Right. Right. I'm a big baby. I'll start crying Ooh. quick. Um, <laughs> just to remind everyone, J Arts stands for Juvenile Adult Rehabilitation and Transition Services. You can find J Arts on Facebook. It's J Arts Second Chance Foundation. You can check out their other social medias there as well. And if you want to reach Johnny direct, it's Vega John. 779 at gmail.com. Johnny, thank you so much for sharing your powerful story today. Hope you all enjoyed it. We'd like to thank our sponsors, ERX Contracting, Solutions by Cat, Marketing and Advertising with Passion, and this has been For Your Info Podcast.